It's time to eat, chat, dance, and sing as we delve deeper into the hearts of Hakka country, Ganjo. It's our second Hakka village. We're in Guanxin Xinwei, and it's a lot cleaner, a lot bigger, maybe better for crowds, but it still has plenty of that authentic charm. Let's check out this guy. Ah, I'm 64. You're 64. Uh, I am. Think of it as a pioneer village for pioneers who pioneered the length of classical China before pioneering out to every Southeast Asian country and then on every East Indian man trade route between here and Jamaica. It's been more than a millennia since the trickle out of Shangxi into southern China was globalized into shipholds of tan sinewy men off to the new world. Those journeys likely began after a moment at the village shrine. There are families that live here year round and they'll cook you lunch for a modest fee. We've got some rice cake here, and yeah, it's green. Rice cake is normally white, but it's green because it's seasoned with some yellow flowers. Let's give it a try. Gummy, yummy, and a little salty with the sauce. The fare is drawn straight from the farms next door. Pork is the dominant meat, and a rich ratio of differing leafy vegetables are always served. Hakka cuisine is among the most identifiable marks of the Hakka Ren, aside, of course, from language. Hi, my name is Li Yue of Hakka people. When Hakka people meet each other, they will say Sganin to mean that they are the same family, they are from the same family. They are Hakka people. Hakka people are immigrants, so they are different from the native people here. They have to stick together to protect themselves from the locals at that time. <laughs> Today, Hakka people are known for their hospitality. Up in the hills, the Hakka have mastered intensive farming and irrigation because of necessity. Always away in the hills, far from major river settlements, Hakka villages here in Ganjo are often guarded by stunning geological specimens of eroded red sandstone and Caledonian granite. None cared about these peaks until the Hakka took off from Shangxi. Over generations, the earth's upthrust bones became the revered and silent overseers of mountain life, while the Hakkas brought the music. The Hakka's dramatic repertoire remains distinct from the wider Chinese moors. Their line dance is a unicorn, and the subject matter for most tales is far from the 1% kind of programming common to the arts since people started paying for paintings. Many of the most memorable songs are humbly human, whether they're dancing or singing about working in the fields, being a 16-year-old in an arranged marriage to a 3-year-old, or more vanilla aspects of love. The Hakka Hill song is held in highest regard. Once sung in subversion of dynastic laws, the higher-pitched melodies still waft over the hills, resounding off cliffsides. Digging that rebel yell. As a traditional Hakka woman ages, she dons the blue jacket and hair braids parts. Keeping busy is as regular as drawing breath for many of the older generation who make a living close to home. Whether they're stewing in smoke-filled liquor factories or spinning yarns of wisdom handed down orally since it all started. Define pure. Join us next week when we take a river ride, head up another sacred mountain, and go to the hot springs. See you then.